get um, First Maccabees chapter 5 and verse 1. Right, because it's not a new thing right here. No. No, I would. This is the book of First Maccabees, chapter 5 and verse 1. Because this is not a new thing right here. Let me this is not a new thing that's happening. When the nation see Israel rising up, of course they want to do something to stop the uprising of God's chosen people. Right? This has been going on for generation on top of generation on top of generation on top of generation. Right. It's just happening in our generation. Right. Right? All praises to the most high. Right? Bring that up. God, first Maccabees chapter 5 and verse 1. Bring it up. Now when the nations round about heard that the altar was built and the sanctuary renewed as before, it displeased them very much. It's displeasing to these nations to see men stand upon their feet, to see men want to keep the commandments, to teach their children, to teach their wives, to set their nation in order. Right? It displeases them. It's distasteful. It's like eating a warhead. Right? You're just trying to find a sweet spot, and there's no sweet spot. Right? Because the because they already know what's coming after us being in order. Right? Blood, retribution, revenge. All hell is about to break loose, man. And these nations know it. That's why, uh, what was his name? Was it Edgar Hoover? He said we need to stop the rise of a black messiah. They know what's coming, man. They can smell the death and destruction that's coming when we stand upon our feet. Right. Right? Wherefore, they thought to destroy the generation of Jacob. They thought to do what? Destroy the generation of Jacob. So it's not surprising that you're going to have agents coming to the truth. Right. It's not surprising you're going to have your own countrymen turn. Right? They're thinking of all many different ways. COINTELPRO isn't just something that happened in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Right. It happened thousands of years ago. Right. So they're thinking upon how to destroy this brother, this brother, this brother, your children, your wives. So you got to be 10 times smarter than them. You got to truly put your whole heart in serving the Lord. Right? That's why Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 4 said, give me Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 2. Come right? Wherefore, they thought to destroy the generation of Jacob that was among them. And thereupon, they began to slay and destroy the people. And that's what they do now. Right? It may not be on the physical level as they did it back then, but spiritually we get destroyed. This image destroys us every day, man. You know how many times we come to camp and we have people scared to step on that image? You know how many times we come to camp and we have people scared to walk away from the so-called white man? Right. How many times we come to camp and they say, I can't stop eating pork and crab, shrimp, and lobster? They're destroying us on a spiritual level, man. Right. And if you know your enemy, you're going to know how to combat it. You're going to know how to fight against it because you're going to be more spiritual than you are carnal. Because, yeah, we make... We may look like, give me, uh, not come on, give me Numbers 13 and start at verse 32. We may look like grasshoppers in their sight, but nothing is impossible with the Lord. Right? Numbers 13, verse 32. Bring it out. And they brought up an evil report right. of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel. Right, and that's what happens. We bring up evil reports because we see how Esau is conspiring against us. We see the things that Esau are doing behind closed doors. We understand the unrighteous codes and laws and things put in regulation, right? We understand those written reports, but we don't fear the things that the so-called white man can right. do to us. Right, right, right. How you gonna fear when you got the creator of all things? Right. The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, right. and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And that's how we look at the so-called white man, because in this day and age, these are men of great stature. A white man can say that the sky is purple, best believe all the uh, textbooks will be changed from blue to purple. Right, right. A white man can say it's okay to change your uh, gender, Look what's happening now. Yep. Right. You ain't never seen as many trains. Freaks. Right. You ain't never seen as many freaks and creeps. Right. Right? Verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak. Right. Which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Mm. So we were like grasshoppers in their sights. Where right? if a grasshopper were to hop in front of you, you're not going to run and jump unless you're a woman. Right, you're going to step on the grasshopper and keep it moving. Right. That's how these other nations are looking at us. But in these days, we're going to stand with great boldness in the face of those who have afflicted us. We're going to look at them in their eyes and tell them who they truly are. You didn't get this 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 
It's because the spirit of the Lord is manifesting throughout this land. Let me get that wisdom of Solomon chapter 5. Come. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse number 1. We get out. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. So this is what's happening now. This is real-time prophecy, man. The men of the Lord are standing in great boldness in Babylon the Great, in Europe the bottomless pit, right. in China, in South America, in the land of Ham, in Australia, wherever we at. And we're shaking the hand at them who counted our lives as nothing. Right. We're pointing them in their pointing in their face right. and telling them that they're the devil that the Bible speaks That's of. That's right. And we understand that we're not gonna fall victim to the devil's devices. We're not gonna fall victim. To devil to the devil's temptations. That's right, that's right. Because we saw and learned from our forefathers. Give me Baruch chapter one and study verse eighteen. Keep going. God. When they see it, they shall be troubled with fear. And they're troubled with fear. They're troubled with fear at the sight of us standing up, man. Because you know what's gonna happen? That march. That Joel the second chapter. That Joel the second chapter is knocking on the door, man. I can't wait to get my hands bloody. All right. right, these Edomites up here, they right. live way too long. All right. What are they, maybe 60, 70? Yeah, they might be like 25, right? That's too many days upon the land, man. Right. And that's how we're gonna be looking at it when it's our time to rule, man. Right. And we're gonna be those cruel kings that they're talking about. Right. We're gonna be those kings that they never wish that they looked in their right. eyes. Right. How they call this boy? Right. Don't look me in the eye. You better put your nose in that dirt. Right. Whenever you see an Israelite king walking on this earth, right? right. right. Come on. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear right. and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. And they're going to be amazed at the strangeness of our salvation. Right. This is the first portion of salvation. The renewing of your mind. That's right. Right? Being born again as the Lord commanded us to be. Right. This is strange right here. It's no way possible that we should be able to read, write, comprehend, understand the scriptures, know who we are. This is strange to them. They did everything in their power, spent millions of dollars, billions of dollars, different codes, took the Bibles out of school, took right. the fathers out the home, right. Right. right? Got the mothers on drugs, right. got the kids on drugs, but Talk for some it. reason, we ain't nowhere. We ain't nowhere but where the Lord said we was gonna be. And that's rising up in these last days, right? I'm tired of seeing our elders beat down having to work, man. Right, right. There's no reason. Right? Right. 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 White people right here, they were tired. Right. See? They retired. They retired. Yeah. See? Yeah. You can't make this up, man. There's no reason our grandmothers should be working till they 85 right. when they give up the ghost. Right. No reason our fathers should be working till they 92. Back and legs and arms breaking and never got a chance to rest. Or what they call your um, your golden years. Right. They never got to enjoy their golden years, man. All that is gonna switch around. All that is gonna switch. And you're gonna see the true people who are supposed to be at the top, at the top. Why right, keep going? Come. So far beyond all that they look for, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom he had sometimes in the risen and a proverb of reproach, we fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of God and his lot among the saints? How are niggas numbered among the children of God? How are the gang members, the bloods, the crips, the essays numbered among the children of God? Right. It's gonna be confounding to them. Cause let them tell it, they the most pure people walking on the earth. Damn, I hate this place, man. Keep going, kid. Come. Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth? Right. And the light of righteousness have not shined unto us, and the sin of righteousness rose not upon us. So how did yeah. we err from the truth? Yeah, not... Because we was never taught the truth the proper way. We was never taught how to serve the Lord. We was never taught how to keep the high holy days. We was never taught how to treat our brother. We was never taught how to forgive our brother. That's important, man. Forgiveness is a hard thing to learn. But we learn from our forefathers. Let me get that in uh, 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 Baruch chapter 1, start at verse 17. Baruch chapter 1 and verse 17. Bring it out. For we have sinned before the Lord and disobeyed him and have not hearkened to the voice of the Lord our God to walk in the commandments 
that he gave us openly right. since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt. So since the day we left out of Egypt, we've been doing the complete opposite of what the Lord has told us. Brother, take a flyer from that brother. Right? Since the days we walked out. And if you do something over and over and over and over and respect a different outcome, you're insane. Right. The nation of Israel became insane following after their own heart, man. That's why we look at each other as enemies. That's why we move in a certain manner because we don't know any different. We weren't taught properly, right? God. Since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt unto this present day, right? we have been disobedient unto the Lord our God, and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. Wherefore, the evils cleaved unto us, and the curse which the Lord appointed by Moses. So, his so these evils and these curses, they cleave to us. Like a mother cleaves to their parent, uh, to their child, how a child cleaves to their parent, right? Because it's a law that you're supposed to write these laws on your doorposts and right. on your on your gates, That's so right. that you don't forget them. That's you're supposed on. to teach them to your children God. as you walk upon the city, and when you walk up, uh, when you wake up, and we never did these things, God. right? Get that law, off the show. These are the things that we are God. supposed to do, but we never did it. So these curses. These evil things cleave to us, and we expect the best, but know the worst is coming. Right? Bring it up. God. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4 and verse number 9. Bring it out. Only take heed to thy soul and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thy eyes have seen, and lest they depart from the heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Especially the day that thou stood before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said to me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. So you're supposed to teach it to your sons and your sons' sons, right? And that's what we're doing now. We're shaking that generational curse. We're shaking the aspect of it only being about me and my immediate family right. because we're in this truth so that our son 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 sons can be saved uh, right. so that we can be in a, a peace and salvation can reign upon us that's right so that we can have a chariot over the top of our households right those many mansions that the lord promised to us right that is the mind frame of us coming into this truth right bring that out king let's do the six and verse six bring it out and these words which i command Thee this day shall be in thine heart, right? and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And how do you teach them diligently? By rehearsing the righteous acts. That's right. By telling your children how you came up short, and how you are going to show them how to do right. There's no reason that anybody's kids up here should have ever tasted pork. And once you come into the truth, they should never know what pork is, man. Right, right. You're like, pork, man, that's foreign to me. Right, right. I'm royalty. What the hell am I going to do with a garbage disposal? Right. Like sticking your hand in the sink and eating the stuff that's left over right. in there. Talking about this is delicious. All right, keep going, King. Okay? And shall talk of them when thou, sittest, when thou sittest in thine house. Right. And when thou walkest by the way, and when, lies th and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. So your house should have that spirit of the Lord in it constantly. It should be constantly in there. Because if the spirit of the Lord is in your house, where's room for Satan? Everybody's going to be on the offensive, man. Uh -huh. You're not going to know what it means to have uh, uh, evil done in your house if you truly trust in the Lord. If you truly follow what the Lord told you, we wouldn't be walking in insanity. That's right. We wouldn't be walking in the way that fill it right into ourselves. Right, keep going, King. Okay? And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And that's a law right there. That's a law. And that's why since the day we left out of Egypt, we've been at the bottom of the totem pole. That's right. We've been looking up, trying to get a hand up, when the Lord been pushing us down this whole time. Let's go back to uh, Baruch. Come. Baruch 1 and 19. Since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt right. unto this present day. We have been disobedient to the Lord our God, and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. Right. Wherefore the evil is like wherefore the evils 
cleave unto us and the curse which the Lord appointed by Moses, his servant, at the time that he brought forth our fathers out of the land of Egypt. Come on up, sister. Let us read two verses for you. Come on, sister. Come on, fly. Oh, we're good. You go, King. Come. To give us a land that floweth with milk and honey, like as it is to see this day. So we had a land promised to us that flowed like milk and honey. Man, milk and honey is a sweet texture together, man. That's right. But now we're in this land of dirt and dust, man. But it's going to come a time where all nations are going to have to come to the land of milk and honey to find out what to do, unless they be destroyed. Right? Because the Lord is coming as a destroying cloud in the Babylon the Great. And I can smell the blood and death coming, man. You can see the insurrection coming. Right? You got people talking about we're going to succeed from the United States right. if they don't open the border, right. they don't close the border, if they don't leave those floaties in the Rio Grande. Right? You got Putin doing interviews with, with um, Tucker Carlson, talking about America's dollar is going to be nothing in a few weeks. Talking about America is going to be nothing in a few years. Right? These things are coming to pass, and America is just going to and fro, not even knowing what the hell is going on. Not even giving a damn that these leaders of other nations are telling you that all hell is about to break loose. Right? I just saw um, the other day that Russia started doing more nuclear drills. North Korea started stocking up more nuclear arms. Right. Wait, these things are starting to ramp up. And only a fool would see the evil and conti uh, continue in their folly and think that everything's going to be good. Right. right. Wait, bring that up. Shalak. Zachariah chapter 8 and verse number 20. Bring it out. Thus said the Lord of hosts, it shall come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities, right. and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord, and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also, yea, many people, and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem, and to pray before the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass. What'd you say, brother? The most high, one God. There you go, brother. What's your nationality? Okay, brother. There you go. All right. All right. All right. My man, right. keep the commandments and repent. All right, all right. So, <laughs> so these strong nations gonna have to come unto uh, Israel to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. They're gonna have to find out how to do it. And the only way you're gonna do that is if you see the destruction that the Lord is gonna bring upon this nation. The only way you're gonna submit and want to come unto Israel. Is once you know the destruction that the Lord is coming with, right? Bring that up. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 19 and verse 1. Bring it out. The burden of Egypt. Right. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. So that's how they're going to end up coming. Because we're going to beat them in subjection. They're going to have no choice but to get down or lay down. Ain't gonna be no in between. We can keep our gods, and we can still love, and we can still do all these things. All right, keep going. And the <laughs> that's Babylon, man. Just distracted, man. Just walking to and fro, looking at his phone, man. God and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother and everyone against his neighbor city against city and kingdom against kingdom a house divided can't stand man if you fighting against your brother how you gonna know when the enemy is coming in if you trying to spread yourself thin what's gonna happen you're gonna be left then that's right and that's what's coming man israel is coming to take what you have taken from us everything that you have done to us we're gonna do to you that's right man, isn't that in the law that's in the law, man. Right. The curses are gonna cleave unto them as the curses cleave unto us. Right. Instead of us being niggas, guess what we gonna call these white people? Crackers. Niggas, crackers, honkies. Right. Uh, what else? Pecker Woods. Demons. Demons. Devils. Devils. Used to bees. Cause they ain't gonna be around too much longer right. when the kingdom comes. That's right. right. Like we ain't gonna that. be thinking about white people. It's gonna be like a dream, right? Like when you was younger, you saw that scary movie and you couldn't sleep. You right. laugh at that now. That's how we're going to laugh at these white people, man. That's right. 
then it's going to be no remembrance of it, man. Ah. And the Lord is taking a lot of courage and pride out of Esau now, man. The women are becoming men, yeah. right? The women are running the so-called white man's houses. Right. You got the Arab women, they going around not wearing their hijabs, right. disobeying their fathers. The Moabites, they just, damn, I don't even know, man. You can't tell a, a Moabite woman from a man now. Right. right. Where everything is so backwards. What's up, brother? You got two minutes to find out who you are? What's your nationality? They always say they know who they are and they don't know a damn thing, man. Right. They don't know nothing. Right. And 50 years old and you still calling yourself a black man, an African American, man. That's why these curses, they cleave to us, man. Because of pride. That pride that we have brings us low, man. Keep going. God. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. What's going to happen? And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. And we seeing that happen today, man. We seeing the House divided with the Senate, with Congress, right. right? With the left wing and the right wing, the liberals, right? The Green Party, the Republicans, the Democrats, the independents. Ain't no, there's no more confusion throughout this land than in America. There's no more destruction, but the Lord is coming as a destroying cloud. Right. To end the confusion, right? What's going on, sisters? Y'all got two minutes to find out who y'all are? Give us two minutes. Two minutes, sister. I saw you slow down. Come take a flyer then. Take a flyer. I'll pray. I'll pray. Take a flyer. Now come back. Come take a flyer, sister. But before we give you this flyer, we have to ask you one question. What's your nationality? What's your race? What about you, sister? Now, are y'all really black? Are you really black? What color is your skin? Your skin is light skin? What color is your skin? It's light. What color is your jacket? So are we truly black? Are we truly black people? I can't hear you. You amongst family, so y'all y'all don't gotta be shy or nothing. We are here to teach y'all. We want y'all to know who you are before you walk away. So the ideology of being called black came from the so-called white man. Right. When you think of anything black, do you think of anything good? Black magic, a black cat, black male, black ball, there's right. nothing good with black. But if you think of white, you think of pure, beautiful, holy. Right, these are the mind tricks that the so-called white man has played on us. So sisters, today you're gonna find out that they're God chosen people. Right, the greatest people to ever walk upon the earth. Do y'all agree with that? Do y'all think uh, it might be everybody? What y'all think? You don't know? Do you care? Say that again? Just say, yeah, I agree that we the greatest people on the earth. Right. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. We're going to prove it out the Bible that y'all are God's chosen people and y'all the greatest people on the earth. God. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Bring it up. For thou art an holy people. So this is Moses speaking right here. We all know who Moses is, right? What do we know about Moses? It's all right. Well, Moses is the one who said, let my people go. And they left out of the uh, land of Egypt, right, from being a slavery. This is him speaking to his chosen people, right? God, for thou art an holy people. So holy just means separate. It means set apart. Like you got a favorite shoe, don't you? Do you wear your favorite shoe every day? You only wear your favorite shoe when it's time to come out. That's how the Lord is. He has a favorite people. Right? right. Unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said his chosen people are above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Israelites are God's chosen people. Who danced the best? Brother, who played the best football? The Ravens. Who, what nation of people? Yours. Ours. Who dressed the best? <laughs> Who dressed the best? We do, don't we? Look, is she going to outdress you? What she got on? Her, the, the bottom of her pants is droopy as hell. <laughs> Who cooked the best? We cooked the best. You cooked the best, sister. Who looked the best? 
There you go, yeah, sister. See? Who is the best? Me. We are. Right. And who are we? Are we black? Or are we the Israelites? Because remember, black is just a color. That's right. There you go. It's but how would you know that you would be an Israelite? If somebody used to say, uh, little sister, how do you know you're an Israelite? What would you say to them? Just because some big light-skinned dude told me at the Harvard? <laughs> You should be like, well, I want to know how I'm an Israelite. You should be like, show me how I'm an Israelite. You too, sister. Go ahead and say it. Well, we can do that for you. Let's go to Deuteronomy right. 28. God. That's the book of Deuteronomy. <laughs> chapter 28. You shall receive. There right. you go. <laughs> right. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. Right. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Do y'all know what it means to hearken? Hearken means to listen. So we don't listen to the voice of the Lord our God. To observe to do all his commandments. Right. And his statutes. If we don't hearken and do what? All his words. Commandments. There we go. And statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So if somebody said I'm going to put a curse on you, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? That's a bad thing. You're waiting for something bad to happen. Right. Now let's read one of the curses that happened to God's chosen people. Right? Let's, let's start at verse, uh, go to verse 48. God, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So the Lord said his chosen people, for not listening to the law, statutes, and commandments, are going to have to serve their enemies. Right? Who do you think the Lord's chosen people enemies are? You was about to say, sister, go ahead. White people. Right. You have to serve your enemy. Let's see how you have to serve your enemy. God. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. In hunger. What's the last thing y'all ate? A breakfast. A breakfast <laughs> from where? The deli. The deli. Do we own the deli? No. Who owned the deli? The Ching Wong Ying Wong dude? <laughs> right? Or if you want to go to McDonald's, don't. Uh, what's his name? Ronald McDonald own it? The white man. Right? Hey. Or you want to go to World Farms? Do we own World Farms? No. You got to go to your enemy. In hunger. And in thirst. In thirst. Do we own water parks? Or, or water treatment facilities? Do we own Coca-Cola? Do we own... Do you think we own Coca-Cola? No, we don't own it. That's right, sister. Right. What about what about Sprite? Is this, does this brother own Sprite? Absolutely not. What about Pepsi? Does the brother Joseph own Pepsi? Who owns it? What people? White people. That's going to your enemy in thirst. Right? God. And in nakedness. In the clothing we have on. Do I own polo? Best believe I own polo. What about Helly Hansen? Do we own Helly Hansen? What about Nike? Who owns it? Our enemies. Right. So called white people. Right. Don't you got to go to your enemy to get clothing? Don't y'all go to Rainbow or whatever stores y'all shop at and get your clothes? Well, what happens if I own my own clothing store? Where am I getting the material to make the clothes? From your enemy. Right. Right? And in want of all things. That purse you got, sister. Right. right your cell phone, your ear pods, whatever y'all got. Y'all got to go to y'all enemies to get it. Can you name one thing y'all got to go to your enemy for? One thing. We got to go to our enemies for everything. Right. Right. Education, a job, a loan, right. have phone service. Right. Right. You get sick, you got to pay them for oxygen. Right. right. And what's this enemy going to do? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. The Lord said your enemy will put yokes of iron upon their neck. Who's the only people that have yokes of iron upon their neck from their enemies? Who? Black people? But the Lord said this happened to the Israelites. So who are the only people to have yokes of iron upon their neck? The Israelites. Right. Right? And that happened to our forefathers and our foremothers. Yeah. Yeah. So how did we get to this land called America? Y'all don't know how we got over here? Y'all never heard of uh, slave ships? You've heard about it, but you haven't. 
You never heard that we were sold into slavery on slave ships. Say that again. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy, man. They took it out the curriculum. That's ridiculous. Well, we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn y'all something today. So our forefathers and foremothers were brought over to America on slave ships. It's called the transatlantic slave trade, right? And that was prophesied in the Bible to happen to God's chosen people. God. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt That's again. Crazy. So the Lord is going to bring his chosen people into slavery again. With ships. With ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. This was written thousands of years ago that it would happen to his chosen people and it happened to us. Thou shalt see it no more again. Right. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you. So these are the things that happen to the Israelites. Y'all sisters check this out. Right. And y'all be safe out here. The attention span of our people, man. This is crazy. Let's go back to... Uh, that's crazy that they don't teach that stuff, man. Right. How you doing? How you doing, sister? Well, uh, what over here is interesting? What, what you got questions about? West Indies. You see yourself on this side? Yeah. So over here on the on that'll be your left hand side is what the world today would classify as. Has. What do you see yourself as? American black. So called American black. Now. Or my grandfather's birth certificate. It doesn't say African American or black. What does it say, sister? It just say colored. It say colored a Negro. Yeah, a so, Negro. So our nationality changes every 10, 15, 20 years. And who's the people who change our nationality? You can say, you don't got to look around. <laughs> right, we got your right. back. You don't have to worry about that. The WP. Yeah, the WP. Yeah, guess yeah the crackers. Yeah, yeah we're going to call it what it is. Right, they changed our nationality. That's prophesied in the Bible. Right, give me Jeremiah, chapter 17. So we're out here you know. to tell the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that we're God's chosen people that's right. And we are. We, we are, are the, the Israelites. I believe that. Absolutely. Right. Right. You should believe it because it's the truth, sister. Right. 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 Yeah. Everything we're going to show you is going to come out of the Holy Bible. And you see, I, 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 um, I believe in science and God. Okay. I'm more spiritual than religious. Absolutely. Okay. Because I have a inside of me comes out okay and i go to church to fellowship and worship those are like me Absolutely. just looking at right hand mm -hmm. so, yeah i go to a bible teaching on uh, church absolutely and well let's see if they teach this ain't the first time i've encountered with you guys okay y'all been, been coming down here for years yeah, it's been it's been some time oh it's been yeah, some we, years we, we, done, we done changed a little bit of features in fact, the... i was in my um <laughs> 40s when i used to come and I can hear y'all talk another, probably another general, younger crowd or something, but y'all always did this. All oh, praises to the most high. Yeah. Because we always had prophets mm -hmm. who prophesied to our people who we were. Because we've always been lost. Right? right? Bring that up. God. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, and verse number 4. Right? Right. Oh. And thou, even thy soul, shall discontinue from thine heritage. So we've discontinued from our heritage. We don't even know what our heritage is. And that's just why what's going on in the world today, we exactly. are so lost and it's sad. It's, 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 it's pitiful. Yeah. But we waking up in these last days. Yeah, wake up. Right? <laughs> that I gave thee, uh -huh. and, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. So the Lord's chosen people, they got discontinued and disconnected from their heritage and they served their enemies in a land we know not. Know. We don't know this land. We only right. been in this land 500 years. Yeah, we were brought from into this. Do you know that's in the Bible? That know. God's chosen people would be sent into slavery? Let's bring it out. Come. Bring it out. Deuteronomy right. chapter 28 and verse 68. Bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So the Lord brought his chosen people into Egypt again. Now, what were they doing in Egypt when Moses had to tell Pharaoh, let my people go? Oh. What were the Israelites doing in Egypt? Sin. They were committing sin? 
or what condition were they in? Uh, uh, if somebody had to say, let my people go, yeah, they are they free? No, they were in, um, in bondage. In bondage, right? But the Bible explains itself. You go precept upon precept, right? Come on, slug. Come on. The book of Judah, chapter 5, and verse number 11. Right? No. Therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them. So he was real sneaky with the uh, Israelites. Tried to kill uh, all the uh, male borns, yes. right? Put more labors upon us, yes. and did what? And brought them low with laboring and brick, and made them slaves. And did what? And, and made, made them, them slaves. slaves. So when you read Egypt in the Bible, Egypt is synonymous for slavery. So the brother's going to read it as it is in the Bible, right. and we're going to change the word Egypt for what, sister? Uh, slavery. There we go, right? Back in Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord's going to bring us into what again? Slavery. Slavery again. With ships. With what? With, With ships. ships. Who are the only people to ever go into slavery on ships? Us. Us, right? By the way whereof I spake unto thee. The Lord said it's going to happen like that 4,000 plus years ago. Best believe it happened like that. We was right on the bottom of that ship right there. That's right. right. Thou shalt see it. No more again. We haven't seen our homeland since. We don't even know our homeland. We say a continent. We don't know our homeland, right? And there. Once we got off those slave ships. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Those WPs, right? WP. Those nasty crackers. We got For, sold to our enemies. Right? For bondmen. Slave men. And bondwomen. Slave women. And no man shall buy you. That's why you're still here today in 2024. And your last name would be Johnson, Jackson, Williams, Brown. McCafferty. McCafferty. I've never even heard that. That's Irish. 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 And you know, them Irish, Irish people was nasty. Right. Yep. They was brutal. When I worked at Bank of America, uh, mm -hmm. the Merrill National Bank back in the 1980s, and I um, put my name in a ticket, mm -hmm. and when I come downstairs, because I won, and they said your name, and I said Francine McCafferty, and they said, like a scope. You're mm -hmm. Mickey. I said, yes. I said, I've married an Irishman. Mm. He in heaven now. Right. Um, I, I didn't want to. I go to church every Sunday. What did they teach you about that verse right there? Nope. They didn't teach you that you were Israelite? Nope. And that this happened to us for breaking the commandments? Nope. Seems like a lot of the Bible's not being read in your church right now. Yeah, it's being read, right. but I didn't get to that part. But um, my children are more spiritual. They, um, the Bible has a lot of twists and turns in it, they're saying. Like what? Twists and turns of like, we, women never had rights from the beginning in the Bible. Who told you that? We, we did. Look at how we, we always had an answer to a man. Always. Well, there's order. Let me get First Corinthians. That's order. Because a man's job is to protect and, and provide yes. and hunt. And what's a woman's job? To, to nurture, nurture which and did. to bring forth. Yes. So, of course women have a, a, a vital role in our society. Oh, we all do. Absolutely. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 3. Right but I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So there's an order to how things are done. Right? This society, this society is the only place that says everybody's equal. That, that doesn't make sense. How can we all be equal? There has to be a power structure. We're all the same, but we're different. I mean, in a sense, we're but there's the same, an order to how different. things are done, right? Are these order. your grandbabies? Yes, they are, and I got great grandbabies. All crazy. I so, get stirred a lot at um, from um, WPs because interaction, right? And this, right? And they even asked me because I used to be black and white, and I and they said, "How you get?" I said, "It grew like that." And then people asked me that, "You're a natural, yeah." God the, did this. Yeah, God did it. That's God the beauty. God did it. Right. right. You know, so but to go back in my to the line order. Of family, it's, it's mixed. No, my, it's not mixed. It, we just the salt of the earth. We have everything. Somewhere That's right. Right. You can have family. hair like like coarse like this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can have hair like the brother Angelo back there. Of course. Like brother Angelo. Yeah. You can have hair like the brother the brother from Gaia Island. Well, we, see, we 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 hey. come in many different shades and many different textures. Well, see, I I I I need I want to um. My Bible study, I need, I got questions. I got you, but before we, can I, can I expound on the, on the order? Right, what I was saying was, these are your grandbabies. They're not going to teach you what you need to teach them. Yeah. Like, you're not going to protect your husband. Your husband's supposed to protect you. Yeah. That's the order of how things are supposed to go, right? Like, we have a head as well as man. 
which is Christ, right? Kind. That the head of every man is Christ, right? And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ, even Christ has a head, is God. Is God. So there's an order how things are done. So if everything was out of order, we'd just be in America. Yeah. That's why we think it's okay that everybody has equal rights. This is the only nation that everybody is so equal. Right. That didn't happen until the 40s, when World War I and World War II was going on. Right? But we're trying to teach our people the rights that we do have come from the law changes and commandments. That's where our strength and power come from. Right? So we're going to read you three commandments. Hair like wool, okay. Oh, hair like wool, right. Relationship. Absolutely. Um, that's what my saying. Yeah, I'm just saying, every time I see a picture 25. of Christ, it's always a... Uh, Him. Yeah. And that's definitely not the image of Christ. Right. Hair like wool. Right. Skin like, like what? Bronze. Like brass. Burned in what? In the furnace. Oh, in the furnace. There you go, yeah. sister. Right. So they are teaching something in that church then. Yeah. Because a lot of churches don't teach that. Right. Yeah. Right? So let's go. We're going to read you some of the commandments. Because that what we read was a curse that happened to the Israelites for breaking the commandment, being sent into slavery on ships, forgetting your nationality, serving your enemies. So if you're going to keep touching the stove and getting burnt, if you reach out to touch it again, you already know the consequence. Right. So if we keep breaking the commandments, all these curses right here happen to our people. Yeah. So should we keep breaking the commandments or should we start keeping them? We should start keeping them. Well, let's find out some commandments we should keep then. Right. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, and verse number 5. Read it, it reads, The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. So one of the law stages of commandments for the Israelites is that our sisters, our mothers, sisters, wives, daughters, grandbabies, aunts, aunts, uh, cousins, should not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So what are some things that all women wear that pertain to men? Pants. Pants. You hit it right on the nail. So what should we not wear? Pants. There we go, sister. There we go. Keep going, King. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So a man should put on a woman's garment. What should we wear? Dress. Will we look crazy out here in, in a whole bunch of dresses? Brothers have dresses on and they blowing like the brother said, tutus. You will look at us crazy, wouldn't you? How should we look at you? Pants. I have no idea. In the same type manner, right? For all that do so, what? Come. It reads, <clears throat> for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So everybody who does the who does the opposite of what the Lord says is an abomination. It's also called a sin because yeah. breaking the commandments of the Lord Jeez. is a sin. So sister, you can't wear what anymore? Pain. Not because we said so. Because the Lord says That's so. right. And because our sisters want to wear pants, all these curses happen to us. Look, gator bait, white human zoos. Now, we're not going to keep touching that stove. Are we going to stop touching it? Yeah, right. So we don't have to fit these curses anymore. So, sister, from this day forward, you shouldn't wear any more pants. Gotcha. You should turn your pants into dresses or skirts. Right? So you wouldn't be in that sin. Now, it's more commandments. This is a huge book right here. Right, go ahead and bring that out, King. Yeah. Book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, and verse number 9. Bring it out. And like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So it has to be modest, right? Not revealing, not tight, right. but nice and forward. Something beautiful, yeah. right? Come. With shame faceless and sobriety. Not with broided hair or gold or pearls. Not doing things to accentuate what you're wearing. Right. Bringing attention to yourself. Yeah. Right? And that's what a lot of our sisters do. Yeah. Because destruction, that's where order comes in. You take the man out the house, what happens? Everything. Everything's crumbles. Yeah. That's why we have to have structure and we have to come back to serving the Lord. Because surely the Lord has the foundation before America was set, right? Yeah. Well, let's find out some more commandments. Then. I got right. it. Is it okay? This Absolutely, man. Absolutely. God. You don't have to ask at all. I mean. Yeah, we, you're at home. We family that just met for the first time. All right. Right? You bring that up. God. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. Right. And the swine. Wait, hold on. Come on up, sister. We're reading the commandments of the Lord. Right? Yes. God. Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. 
So before you walked up, we were explaining that the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans were God's chosen people to Israel. Black is just the color of your hoodie. And nobody up here has black skin. African American is the name of two different white men. Leo Scipio, Africanus, and American Vascucci. But once you start to read the Bible and get into history, understand that God's chosen people went into slavery on slave ships, like, like we read uh, to the uh, sister right here earlier, that it only happened to the Israelites, and it only happened to us. So two and two definitely equals four. So we would be the Israelites, right? Right. So we're reading some of the commandments that God gave to the Israelites, right? God. Leviticus 11 and 7, and the swine. The swine. So what is swine? Poor, right? Though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed. He got the characteristics of a clean animal, right? Like a cow, sheep. Yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. So he doesn't digest his food properly. If a pig were to eat something, it just stays inside you. And you just eat it. Like our people eat pork belly. Imagine eating pork belly and you eat everything that's been ate by that pig. Right. Right? What does the Lord say we can't do? God. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. So if the Israelite man, woman, or child were to eat pork, they would be in sin. Now do we eat pork up here? No. Okay, I'll pray. What about you, sister? I'm back and forth. Back and forth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the Lord said that we shouldn't do that. Yeah, my daughter said lips that touch pork will not touch her lips. There we go. Yeah. And pork shouldn't touch our lips. Right. 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 So of their flesh shall we not eat. Because if we were to continue to eat pork, bacon, ham, scrapple, we would be in sin, right? And sin bring, brought forth all these court, uh, curses right here. Right. And ultimately, sin brings forth death, right? Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. So from this day going forward, sisters, we have to make a conscious effort and to show that we love the Lord to not eat any more pork. Because I can surely see that y'all love the Lord or y'all would have walked away when these Bible verses were coming out. Right. Now, how do you show that you love the Lord? By keeping his word. Word. Keeping his word and his commandments. So no more I'm here and there with it, sister. It's no more pork, period. At all. Right? But there's more to it. Right? Right. Verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the sea. Salakia. In the waters. In the seas. And in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So what can we eat that come out of the water? Fish. Fish, but it has to have what? Scales. And what else? Fish. There we go, little sister. Right? But and all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So everything in the water that doesn't have fins or scales is an abomination. A now what shrimp? is shrimp? Right? What else? That uh, doesn't have clams, fins and scales. Clams, lobster, 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 crabs, uh, eels, calamari, right, right. turtles. Uh -huh. What else? Catfish. 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 All these things yeah, are an crawfish. abomination. Crawfish. <laughs> all the stuff you like. That's all the stuff that we used to like as well. Right. Yeah. But best believe we love the Lord more than the things of this world. So we, we right. instead of feeding the flesh, we need to feed our spirit. Exactly. Feeding our flesh with these, right. with these abominations, with these abominations are making us sick. Yeah. Right? And those are bottom feeders. Yeah. They Some eat the stuff that comes feeders. out of the fish. Yeah. Right? And they call it a delicacy at Rusty Scupper. Ain't that right. They charge you eighty dollars a plate. Right? right. Well we're not even supposed to be eating it. At all. Right. We're your holy people. Why would holy people eat, eat anything? Right. Yeah. Right? And like princesses. What do princesses wear, sister? Crowns. Crowns and what else? What type of attire? Robes. Robes and it start with a D. Dresses. 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 Yeah. So as Israelite princesses, what should our sisters wear? We already touched Dresses. that with you. Dresses. Dresses. So no more leggings or pants. Because uh, all that do so are what to the Lord? Uh, Abom sin. Abomination. There we go. It's an abomination. And I can see why they don't want to play with some of us. It's too naked. And it's too revealing. So those are two commandments that are not hard to keep. It's not hard to not eat pork, is it? No, no. It's not. Because I can eat turkey bacon. There we go. All praises to the most high. It's not hard not to eat crab, is it? 
<laughs> it's not hard not to eat shrimp, is it? <laughs> well, I know. Because we're God's well, let me people. Say he this. commanded us well, not to eat We know better, we do better. That's right. 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 So At now we know point. better. Right. How yeah. do we got to act? Uh, accordingly, and in decency and order, and according to the law. There we go, right. sister. There so, we go. Yes. That's why I pray for God. I, I pray for spirituality for spirit instead of feeding my flesh. I want him to feed my spirit. Right? Well, the Lord is feeding your spirit by showing you his law, statutes, and commandments. Yeah. So we don't fall victim to these curses again. So if the Lord commanded us not to eat crab, shrimp, and lobster, what should we stop eating? And they'll go out of business. They'll go out of business. Right, right, right. right. You got time for one more commandment. Okay. We'll give you one more. Let's go to Exodus 20. Because today is what day? It's the Saturday. Saturday. Right, Saturday. but is it a, it's a what? It's a Sabbath. The Sabbath day. Right? Okay. Oh, pretty right I'm sorry, go ahead and bring it up. This is the book of Exodus, chapter okay. 20, and verse number 8. Right. Right. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor. So the Lord said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Holy just means separate or set apart. Yes. Like you got your favorite outfit. It's separate from something you will wear to, to work. Yeah. Right? If you're going to a concert or going out to eat, I'm taking this that's all the way in the back of the closet. I'm putting it on. Yeah. That's how the Lord said the Sabbath day is. So you got six days to do all your work. Right. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And Seven days working. Seven. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Right. But the seventh day is a seventh of the Lord thy God. Right. In it thou shalt not do any work. So on the Sabbath day, you're not supposed to do any work. Right. Right. No going to work, no mopping the floor, no taking out the trash, no cleaning the window, no uh, Saturday morning mix because you're ready to clean. Right. Nobody sit here and Mary J. Blige right. and smell pine saw in your house. Right. 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 I'm guilty. Yeah, we're all with guilty. Oh, but like you said, when you know better, do you do better. better right? Uh. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor the, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. So the Lord made the seventh day a holy day so we got a high holy day every other day every other week every week right every friday sundown to saturday sundown is the sabbath day so no doing any work and it's another thing we can't do on the sabbath day kind nehemiah 10 and verse number 31 and if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the seventh day to sell so if anybody were to bring merchandise to us so that we can sell or, or buy from them, what should we do? That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath we or on the buy, holy day. We shouldn't buy or sell on the Sabbath day. So no buying or selling from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. My sister, I see you just bought that. So going forward, I know it's a lot. It's a lot to hit you, but it takes baby steps. It's the first pedal, then the next pedal, and then you just ride it like it's nothing. Like we probably haven't rolled bikes yet. 20, 30 years. But I guarantee you, if we took that bike from him, you would know what to do on foot. <laughs> so you're not going to forget. Right. So it takes that process yeah. to learn how to do it. So no working on the Sabbath or buying and selling. Right. Right. So this should be the last Sabbath that you ever buy on the Sabbath. That's right. Because what God chose the people, the Israelites. Right. right. Nobody is better than us on the face of the earth. Now, sister, you already said, who is this right here, sister? Is that Jesus? No. What, 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 what does Jesus look like? Dark skin. Uh, image of me. Terrible. Yeah. Like, yeah. So why does this image still stand in our houses, our grandmother's houses, our mother's houses? Why is that image still there? I have no idea. Not mine, y'all. Not you? Okay, all praises. This is what you would call the image of white supremacy. This is what keeps us in the mind frame that they're God. When we see that image, we look at the so-called white man as if they're inferior, right? Or superior to us. And we're the lower race. But in all actuality, they have recessive genes. Right. And we have the dominant genes. Right. right. If you look at all the nations around the earth, how many nations truly have white people who, who rule them? Maybe two, three? 
But if you go to Asia, do they look like white people? You go to so-called Africa, do they look like white people? We definitely outnumber them. Yeah, but different. the Lord has a portion. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 8. We are the Lord's portion. The Israelites. And if you are the Lord's portion, you should follow what the Lord commands us to do. Yes. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. So the Lord's portion is his people. Contrary to what they teach in the Christian church, the Lord has a chosen people. And he doesn't care about anybody else. And that's us. Right? Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Right? So we call this verse that we're about to bring out the shock. Right? Because a lot of people tend to think that John 3.16 is talking about everybody. God loves everybody. But that's contrary to what's taught in the Bible. That's contrary to what the prophets of old taught, to what the Lord himself taught. Right? Yes. Bring that up. Kind. Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 54. You know. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. So everybody in the whole world comes of Adam, right? We can all agree on that, right? Right? And the people also whom thou hast chosen. So who are the Lord's chosen people? The Israelites. Israel. And who are the Israelites? Us. Us, right? All uh, this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. So the Lord made the world for the Israelites' sakes. Right. Right? And if you look at the elements, if we go outside, we get more beautiful. That's right. Right? We get way more beautiful. We go out in the fresh air, we breathe better. Right? But if they go out there, you know, go out here and the sun is out, what's going to happen? They're going to burn. Right? So the Lord made the world strictly for the Israelites' sake. Right. As for the other people, right. which also come of Adam. So everybody comes of Adam like we agreed with earlier. What does the Lord say? Thou hast said that they are nothing. No, the Lord loves them. That they, they are, are nothing. nothing. So the Lord has said all the people who don't come from the 12 tribes of Israel are what? Nothing. nothing. But be like unto spittle and as like the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So the Lord loved us so much. He said, I don't give a, you know what about these other people? <laughs> so if the Lord felt that way about us, we should go 10 times harder in keeping these commandments, right? right? We could be up here all day reading all the commandments in the world, but it takes us to put forth that effort, that first pedal, then that second pedal. As a what? As a what? As a black person? As an Israelite. That's right. tribe? Mm. So which one though? So are we American blacks or are we the tribe of Judah? Oh, tribe of Judah. Mm. So we are the real Jews that the Bible speaks of. That's right. We are the real Jews. And the Lord tells you what the Jews look like. Uh, John 3.16, you remember what you said that uh, the Lord so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll save you. Absolutely. Who's down here? Do you believe that Jesus um, is the Son of uh, of God? Absolutely. Okay. So you believe in Jesus? Cause you know Jesus is the only way to get through the heaven gates. That's the only way to get through Jesus. You can't go into God. You can't go in sideways. I mean, you must go through the door. I can agree with you 100. percent I got a brother, a brother that believes in God but don't believe in Jesus, and I'm about to. I'm trying to get information so I can share with him. Absolutely. Yeah. No, we got information right here as well. Yeah, that he do not believe in Jesus. I don't right. understand that. Well, let's find that out. Because a lot of people believe that this is Jesus. Right. And their mind has been altered that white Jesus and and, and uh, all the saints are white. So until you can look at this book and see it as a photo album, you're never going to believe the things in it. Right. So that's why the Lord said in John the third chapter, you have to come as a child. You have right. to forget everything that you learned before to actually study and read. Right. right. right bring that up. This is the book of Acts. Chapter 5 and verse 29. Bring it out. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Well, we can all agree with that. We all should obey God. Acts 5 and 29. 
precepts. We all should obey the Most High over man. You should never listen to us unless we're coming. Thus saith the Lord. Uh, right? God. Verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Now you can show him that verse and ask him how does he feel. Okay, so Acts and then go to Isaiah 5, 53. 29 and 30. What? Isaiah 53. Because if, so if they only believe the Old Testament, then you only believe in half of the house. That's like saying I only have a basement. Yeah. Right? Where the rest of the house at? <laughs> God. 29, Isaiah 29. 53. The whole chapter. So on here, we have the QR code. Where we out here every Friday night and Saturday during the day. And on the other side of the fly, you got the 12 tribes and all the YouTube social media information. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, sister, before you leave, what's your nationality? Who are we as a people? Judah. Judah. We the Israelites from the tribe of Judah. That's right. Right? You should never forget that. We have a nationality, we have an identity. I'm sorry, uh, that's You want me to type it in for you? Yeah, because the word thing you want. I got I got you. Take it off. I got you, I got you. It was nice talking to you guys. Absolutely, I got you. Yeah. Don't leave without your phone though. Oh no. <laughs> Israelite. No, watchman for Israel. No, um, Israelites. Who are the Israelites? Who are they? Go ahead and say it, little sister. Who are the Israelites? Yeah, the 12 tribes of Israel, but who are they today? Us, right? There we go, little sister. That's right. Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? There we go. Let's bring it out. Let's get uh, 1 Corinthians 12. Yeah, this is the book of First. God, this is the book of First Corinthians, chapter 12 and verse 2. Ye know that ye... Go to verse 1. Come. Verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brother... I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. So this is Paul went to the church of Corinth. He called them brethren and told them that we were once Gentiles carried away unto dumb idols. So, like the brother went into earlier before you walked up. So once be a Gentile, does that make sense that you could just be an Israelite now? No. So the Gentiles has two meanings. Sometimes you could be uh, uh, somebody carried away into another doctrine or another nation and call yourself African American, but it doesn't change that you would be an Israelite. Right. And then you have just Gentiles, just the other nation, which the brother is going to bring out now. All right, this is the Compact Bible Dictionary. Like Gentile, nation, people, usually it means a non-Israelite people. So usually that's what it means. If you were to read it in the Old Testament or read it in a different context, it what? Said usually it means a non-Israelite people. Right. Under conditions of peace, considerate treatment according to Gentiles by the Israelites under Old Testament law. Right. Often married Gentile women of whom Rabbi, Ruth, Beersheba are notable examples but practice was frowned upon after the return from exile. Right. Separation between Jew and Gentile became more strict until the New Testament period. The hostility is complete. Persecution embittered and Jews and he uh, retaliated by hatred of everything Gentile. So that, that point right there is telling you that it was forbidden for the Israelites to come upon another nation of people. Now you had a separation, right, you had a separation of the two kingdoms. 
you had the southern kingdom, which was Judah, Levi, and Benjamin. Then you had the northern tribes, which was Ephraim on down. And they were considered. Say that again. I of the southern kingdom. Right, you would be of the southern kingdom. And so the northern kingdom was treated as Gentiles. Right? Others. Exactly. But yet so, there's still the twelve. There you go, sister. Makes sense. Yes. All praise to the most high. Yes. You as well, sister. Yes, thank you. Be safe out here. Come. All praise to the most high. St. Luke, chapter 18, and verse number 7. And shall not God avenge his only lip, which shall cry day and night unto him. So the Lord is looking and understanding that the elect are crying unto him day and night. Right? If you're not crying unto the Lord day and night, you may not be part of the elect. You may be a chocolate-covered Edomite enjoying the land of Babylon. Right? Though he battle along with them, I tell you, that he shall avenge them speedily. The Lord is coming like a thief in the night when you least expect it, right? When your eyes are privy to something else, don't get caught doing things that you ought not to do. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? So the only thing that's going to sustain the 12 tribes of Israel in these last days is your faith in your how about Shem Yahushua. And if you don't have faith, ask unto the Lord who giveth to all men liberally. But you have to ask in faith to increase in more faith, if that makes sense. With that, I say, Quam Yashallah! Quam Yashallah! Quam Yashallah! Quam Yashallah! Quam Yashallah! Quam Yashallah!